Hi, Steven here from Demo Garage. I've got another project with the uh, 2017 uh, C-Class motorhome behind me. I was uh, driving in the rain the other day and I noticed some water coming in. And when I investigated, uh, it was actually the seal between the Ford cab and the motorhome box. So let's take a quick look at that. So somehow these two make a connection and uh, let's go inside and take a look at what that might be. Well, here's the joint I was talking about. Um, as you can see, I only got the idea to start recording this about halfway through. I've already taken everything apart. So you'll have to just see me putting it back together and, uh, and the modification I'm gonna make to try and fix this leak. So what we have here is I have removed, obviously, the uh, the cushions, the bedding, um, I've removed the uh, parts of the headliner, things holding the headliner on, the uh, courtesy lamp, the, the visors, and some trim pieces. You'll see me put those back on so you get an idea of where those go in the reinstallation. So this is the upper bunk and the leaking that I was telling you about I had initially thought was coming from this uh, overhead um, light vent and as it turns out like I said before it's the joint between the cab and the uh, sleeping bunk so here's what it looks like so what we have here is the portion of the cab from Ford this is the sheet metal and it was trimmed along this edge and then um, there was an attempt to do some bonding I'm not sure if this is from the uh, RV manufacturer or if this is some repair done in the past but um, this sandwich portion up here is part of the uh, RV conversion and then this is the original Ford. Um, it's my opinion that the leaking was somehow working its way through uh, in between the two, the seal has failed and it's a pretty poor quality job. Um, you can see the sheet metal doesn't conform, it's buckled. The screws are in a state uh, not a lot of those have backed out so much, but they're all in a poor state and some over here actually have backed out. So this is the condition I find it in. And in the next image, I will have uh, removed those screws in to try and separate the original Ford sheet metal from the uh, cab bunk and to see what is going to be needed to throw uh, new sealant in there before I put the reinforcing plate. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, I've got the uh, screws out. Here's another quick look. And uh, I'm not seeing a lot of daylight through this portion, but uh, definitely my the source of my leak this is where it was coming in. Um, you can see, see the camera just right. You can see some, some daylight there. And uh, I think the plan's gonna be to try and dig out some of this old sealant. And I've got some body seam filler to some replace. It looks like maybe there's a, a factory seal in there. Maybe you can just see the gray. Um, so this has probably been looked at before. I don't know what this sealer is, but uh, I'll try and do a better job with my reinforcement plate. Okay, this is the key to my uh, leaky seal repair. This is a reinforcement plate that I drew up and uh, had uh, Send Cut Send make for me. Just showed up, so this is, I guess, one of those 
package reveals. Let's see how it turned out. I've used uh, Send, Cut, Send a couple of times. I was very happy with them. I just drew up this reinforcement plate. Sent them the image or the uh, DXF file. And then I uh, played around a little bit with the materials, the thicknesses, and uh, this is, I'm hoping, gonna allow me to uh, to clamp that uh, with a bunch of new screws, stainless steel this time, clamp that uh, cabin top with the uh, bunkhouse. And of course, I'm gonna glue in the, uh, a, a seal between the two. And uh, I've got a, maybe twice as many uh, screws this time around and this will help distribute the load. So I'm going to go ahead and pr uh, paint and prime this and uh, we'll reinstall this tomorrow. Well, it's the next day and I've gotten some primer on the new uh, reinforcement backing plate. Um, not that it really matters, maybe a little anti-corrosion. This is all gonna be hidden underneath the headliner when I get the headliner replaced. Um, so my next plan is to separate the original metal roof um, Ford cab uh, open as much as possible. And then I intend to um, squeeze a bunch of the seam sealer into it. And then uh, I'll clamp the reinforcement plate back into place and then I intend to uh, fasten it with uh, new screws. You can see the size difference. These are, uh, the new ones are gonna be number 12 inch and a quarter. And again, it's all gonna be hidden uh, behind the, uh, the headliner. So let me go ahead and squeeze the sealant into the uh, cavity on the uh, cab and then I'll get the reinforcement plate clamped into place and I'll bring you back. Okay, well, I have managed to put uh, basically the entire tube of seam sealer into the uh, space between the metal Ford cab and the box. And uh, I'm probably gonna let that set up for a few minutes before I install the, uh, the new backer plate, which you can see here. Pretty pleased with the backer plate and the design. I did appear to miss the radius, um, if you're building your own in a similar fashion. You should maybe uh, take from my experience that it isn't a true radius, it looks like maybe an arc length, but should be uh, plenty good enough uh, to support that metal roof like I had intended it to. So obviously it's sitting on top right there, but you can see it will be uh, flipped below and clamped in place. And then I will use the new stainless steel screws to install it. And again, looks like I've got two or three times more screws that are gonna be utilized in this repair than maybe what came from factories. So uh, yeah, so the, se the sealant is in and then I'm probably gonna wipe that off and clamp it in place. And uh, once it's clamped in place, I'll start uh, pre-drilling for the uh, stainless steel screws and uh, once I have it all installed and clamped up I'll bring it back. Okay that was a lot of work. I uh, maybe didn't need to use the whole tube of uh, sealant in there because as I applied clamps I spent the better part of a uh, entire roll of paper towels just uh, squeegeeing out the, um, the sealant that comes from the joint, but I have a pretty good idea that it's gonna be well, well sealed now. Um, I'm going to now uh, gain access to all the little holes in the backing plate, pre-drill and install the, uh, stainless the new stainless steel screws and I'll bring you back after that's completed. Okay, I've got all the clamps off 
and this sealant cleaned up as much as I'm going to. It's all going to be from this point on hidden behind either uh, trim or headliner. And I'm pretty pleased with the way it went. Um, it was a lot of work, a lot of paper towels cleaning up, but I am a 100% uh, sure that this is not going to leak in the future. So let's take a little bit of a closer look on uh, what this looks like before I put the trim back on. Clamped up nicely. The sealant even covered the uh, plywood raw edge. Then go below so you can see the screws installed. Again, this is all going to be hidden. So I'm pretty pleased with this repair and uh, let me start planning putting the trim back on and I'll show you how that came apart. Okay, so now to put this headliner back together, uh, this is part of the uh, video that you didn't get to see because it took it apart without you, but the next thing to do is to glue these uh, styrofoam pieces back into place. They, they come in here and I guess they're for, I don't know, if you hit your head on this, you don't want a raw edge. So maybe they, they keep you from hurting yourself, uh, but they're going to be glued back into place and I'm, uh, they're going to cover the new reinforcement plate and screws. So they get glued in from below and I'm thinking about maybe using some contact cement or, uh, maybe some spray glue. So let me find out what I got. And uh, when I bring you back, they're probably gonna be installed. Okay, I got the styrofoam uh, pieces uh, glued in and I had them clamped for a little while. And for all of you yelling at me, don't use spray glue or contact cement. You were absolutely right. It did eat into the styrofoam. So I uh, learned from my mis mistake. Uh, it did work out for me, but uh, it was eating into the foam and I'm sure there's a much better glue available out there. So the next step is for me to grab this headliner and uh, <laughs> again, I'm gonna spray glue that, but um, I'm gonna pull it tight and, and glue it to this edge around the styrofoam the way it was, um, you know, kinda, kinda like that. I'll do the middle pieces and then I'll bring in the sides after that. Uh, something to note, um, I did remove um, the clips for the sun visor and the sun visors. And um, there's, a, there's a hard plastic piece holding the front edge of this headliner on. And uh, I think I would have been fine having not removed any of that. Maybe the sun visor, but I suspect I could have left the sun visor in as well courtesy lamp and all that I really just needed to to deal I could have left all that in I really just needed to deal with pulling this trim off and then uh, then pulling down the uh, this one edge of the headliner um, I've got two pieces of trim here that I will explain uh, once I have the um, once I have the uh, the headliners uh, spray glued and pulled taut back into place. I've got um, I'll explain where these trim go, and there is one little section of uh, this trim that could use a little bit of attention. Um, looks like it's still glued down decently well in some areas, but I'm going to go ahead and re-glue this one edge and uh, I'll bring you back once I've got the headliner uh, spray glued and pulled into place. 
I probably don't even need to show you these last videos as you're probably the one to have taken apart your own rig, but I'm getting mine put back together. The headliner is reinstalled. The clips for the sun visor, the courtesy lamps. Had a few of these um, uh, for the sunshade on a uh, on a hard plastic surface that was holding the front of the headliner. And if I back up, you can see that I now have the uh, the back of the headliner spray glued in place, and it was a pretty poor fit to begin with, and. I have it back together. It's a little creases and whatnot, but this is actually better than it was. Maybe I'll work on it some more afterward. But the last thing to do is to put on these trim pieces. And so they work together. I've got the hard plastic one that I just glued back on and it fits inside this one. So that'll fit down here in the side. And this one hides the screw locations. You can see one right here. So you pull this down and you have, you've got access to the screw. I don't know if you can see that or not. But uh, yeah, so I'll try and line up the uh, five or so screw holes with um, you can see one here. Hopefully those still line up. Uh, I got a pick to try and figure it out, but uh, let me get these two installed and I'll bring it back. All right, this is the last scene. I've got it all put back together as you can see behind me. I'm very pleased with the repair and I'm sure I'm gonna have many years of leak-free use of this uh, Class C RV. Um, one quick look here, uh, as I pointed out, Got the trim back on, you got the rubber piece on top with the channel, and then that works in conjunction with the foam colored uh, plastic piece. And together they, they hide the mounting screws. You can probably see one right there. There are five screws in total, and I'm sure every RV is uh, a little different, but uh, since you're the one taking it apart, I'm sure you can figure out how to put it back together. So. Uh, I appreciate you uh, coming along for the ride and uh, thank you very much. This is Steven with Demo Garage.